Today, I would like to teach you how to use algebra to find the x-intercepts of a function. So here we have an example, f of x will equal x to the fourth minus x squared. The first thing is, before we get to the algebra, let's just think about logically what's going on. So let's say you got a graph, all right? And I don't care what the function looks like, just pretend it looks something like this, all right? This has no relationship, it's just totally random, whatever came up in my mind, all right, first. But the idea of what the x-intercepts are, remember your x-axis is generally labeled uh, the horizontal axis and the y is going to be the vertical. You might say, well, I don't have a y in this equation, and that's true, but your f of x is basically the y. Okay, so you can call this y or you can call it your f of x. All right, and I'm not, that looks like some type of form of Egyptian Sanskrit, uh, but that's a little neater. Okay, so what are the x-intercepts? All that means is it's the locations in which the function crosses the x-axis. Okay, let me extend it over here just for illustrative purposes. Now, we know something special about these points. We know that they intersect the x-axis, right? They touch the x-axis or cross it. But we do know also something very special about each one of these points. These points have something in common, all three of them. What do they have in common amongst one another? What do you think? Well, it turns out that the y value of every one of those points is going to be zero, right? Now that's what it basically means to be an x-intercept, okay? An x-intercept is the x value where the function's y value or the function's value equals zero, okay? So let's just think about that logically for a minute. Go back to your function now. So here's your function, okay? So your job is to do this. Here's, I'm just going to write y for now, okay? x to the fourth minus x squared. Your job is to say, okay, I know y or my, f, my function's value or f of x has to equal zero. It has to be zero. So I'm thinking to myself, what do these x values have to be in order for the y term to be zero? Just think about it for a second. Just think about it. What do you think? Forget about math, factoring, who cares? What do you think? Well, if x is zero, let me choose a different color, right? If x here is going to be, let's say, zero, what the hell, that looks like a backward six. If x is gonna be zero, that means this x also has to be zero, and zero raised to the fourth power is going to be zero, and x raised to the, or zero raised to the second power there is gonna be zero, and zero minus zero is gonna be zero, and zero is then equal to zero. Well, guess what? By gosh, by golly, x is equal to zero when y is equal to zero, right? So that's one of the x-intercepts. I'm gonna write it up here, x equals zero. Now also do a little bit of thinking, okay? What, can you come up with a num another number for x, in which case this math statement will work out to be zero? Well, what happens if x is one? Then one to the fourth minus one to the second, well, one to the fourth is just one, one squared is one, one minus one is zero. Oh my God, right? Look at that, another value, okay? When x is equal to one, y is also equal to zero, right? Because zero will equal zero, okay? What do you think, done? I know a lot of you probably said it is, right? But there's actually another value. Think about this one. What else could it be? Rack your brain a little bit. What happened, and then make start making guesses. Start seeing, is two gonna work, three gonna work, four gonna work? You're gonna notice patterns, right? That's the important thing here in mathematics. You want to notice patterns. So what happens? Well, it seems like, what happens if I plug in a negative one for x? Okay, well, negative one to the fourth, mm, this doesn't, okay, this is getting a little, conf a little confusing, right? Negative one squared. Remember, anytime you uh, have a negative value, or anytime you basically have a value to an even power, it's going to become positive, no matter what, no matter whether it's a negative value or a positive value, it doesn't matter, okay? So this is gonna be one. Then minus, well, negative one squared is negative one times negative one, the negative and negative turn into a positive, so that's a positive one in there, right? And this was also a positive one. So positive one minus one is gonna be, oh, wait a minute, zero, oh my goodness, that is well? Yes, that is well. And there's no other value. There's no other value, that's it, okay? See how you can think about it logically, right? Without even doing algebra, okay? But now let's say you're like, well, all right, enough of that, Andrew, I need to know. Teach, how do you do it 
mathematically? How do you do it fact? You know, the teacher's going to want to see work. I can't just, isn't that funny? I would always find that funny, right? And maybe if you wrote out your explanation, you're like, well, I just thought about it. Here's my reasoning. Maybe they would accept it, but they're like, if I don't see the algebra, nope, I can't give you credit. I would rather have some student that thinks about things rather than writes out some procedural process. Okay, you should know how to do both, but think a little bit and it goes very far. Now, how would you do this though via algebra? Well, we have a technique called factoring. Okay, why does or how does the factoring work? Well, that's what I'm going to teach you. So it's always difficult, right? It's like there's always so many steps that can be done and different ways we can look at it. And always the first step is like, well, what do I do first? Now, the first thing I notice here is that I notice that I have common terms, or I can kind of simplify this a little bit, or aka I can factor it, however you want to look at it, okay? Um, why do I see that? Like, why do I see that pattern here? Well, I notice this is x to the fourth. I notice this is x squared. If I could pull out a common x squared term, then this becomes x squared minus one, right? Now, why does that thought occur to me? Well, because I've done tons of practice, right? I mean, at some point, you have to do a lot of a lot of practice, right? You have to interact with problems and practice and see things and hear things and do it actively yourself. It's very hard to kind of teach that right off the bat of what should you do first. The more example problems you do, the better you're going to be, the better problem solver you're going to become. All right, so keep working. And that's actually, we have a whole channel dedicated to that, right? I mean, we got thousands. What do we have? 4,500 4, problems now? 4,500 problems out there? Not only in math, but chemistry, physics, a whole bunch of other stuff. So follow our lead, okay? We talk the talk, but we walk the walk too. So we factored it now, okay? That would be the first step in my mind. Now, here's the thing. If you were to look at this, you have two terms here. Now, think about this. This is some term here, and this is going to be some term here. The only way that this is going to, this whole right side is going to become zero is if this term is zero, Right? If this thing is zero, well, zero then times anything, I don't care what it is inside this parenthesis now, is just zero, right? I mean, it doesn't matter. I don't care what's in here, right? So that's true, okay? That's fine. So this has to equal zero. And then this term also, at some point in time, that whole thing also has to equal zero. Well, why is that true? Well, think about it the other way, right? If this term inside that parenthesis is zero, then whatever this x squared is, I could care less what it is. I don't care because whatever it's going to be times zero is definitely going to be zero, right? I, I don't care. So how do we say that mathematically now? How do we actually say that? Well, we say it by this. Either this term, term should equal zero or this term should equal zero. So guess what? We create now two math equations out of this. We say that our x squared term should equal zero or we say that our x squared minus one term should equal zero, okay? We have those two now equations that are created, right? Now there's a whole bunch of ways you can kind of solve this, okay? You could take the, on the left-hand side, you take the square root of that, right? And obviously the square, of, the square root of zero is just zero, the square root of x squared is x. So guess what? Oh my goodness, isn't this one of the values we saw already? Yes, it is, right? Now, how do you solve this? You could do this in a couple of ways. Right, you can think about factoring this further, right? And you can come up with the binomial of x plus one, x minus one equals zero. And then you can set each of these equal to zero for the same exact logic I mentioned up here. If this term is equal to zero, then this whole side goes to zero because they're multiplied, right? And conversely, if this thing goes to zero, then this whole term will go to zero because they're multiplied. So how do you set that up mathematically? You go x plus one equals zero, x minus one equals zero, right? And you do it again. And notice x is gonna be minus one and x is gonna be equal to one. Oh my goodness, you're kidding me. What? Look at that, right? The other way you could have approached it down here is this way. Just erase this. The other way you could have approached it is add one to both sides, okay? Then x squared is gonna be equal to one. Then take the square root of both sides. Now you have to keep in mind when you take a square root, you should have a positive and negative answer. Although there's some like, I don't know, debate about that out there that hey, if you take it a square root, it should only be the positive root. I, I, I don't know. All I know, all I know is that if when I take the square root, I'm gonna put in a plus minus sign there 
because I know that this value inside of the square root could have been a positive or could have been a minus value, okay? Meaning if I go backwards, if I, if I were to square positive one, then I be, it becomes positive one, right? And if I square negative one, it also becomes positive one. I might have said just before, I don't really remember, but plug in a negative sign into un, you know underneath the square root. Obviously, we can't do that because you can't square root a negative value unless you're going to work with complex numbers. But in any case, I can come up with the same conclusion that x should be either plus 1, you know, and from here, to simplify it, you might say then x could equal positive 1 or x could equal negative 1. But it doesn't really matter, again, because guess what? We're still coming up with those answers, okay? And that's how you do it algebraically, right? Use a calculator, then go check yourself. So go y equals, by the way, great calculator. Really like this TI uh, calculator. Um, hopefully you have one just like you don't necessarily need this one, but a graphing calculator uh, definitely helps a lot, okay? Uh, maybe I'll leave you a link in the uh, description, all right, if you don't have one. So uh, type in the function, right? Type it in, ready? Go x to the fourth, then hit the over button, hit minus now x squared, okay? Then hit graph. Look at that. Now what comes up on your graph, you might have it on zoom standard, okay? So it might look something like this maybe. All you got to do is go to zoom and then hit number two for zoom in. And that'll bring up a nice graph, okay? Now look at the function. It's crossing the x-axis here at negative one. It's crossing the x-axis here at positive one. And it's intersecting also here at positive one. If you want to see it in a table, go to second graph and now you see the table, right? And I have this incremented by 0.1, so don't, it, it's a, that's fine. But if you notice here, x when x is zero, y should be equal to zero. That's one of the uh, x intercepts. When y is equal to zero over here, look, x is one. That's what we said it should be. And then if you go all the way to negative one, look, the same thing. When y is equal to zero, x is equal to negative one. Remember, we defined the x-intercepts as places where the function's value or the y value is equal to zero. And we have now come full circle, okay? Look at how many ways you can approach a problem like this, right? You want to not, you know, don't, when you're doing math, a lot of times like, okay, this is just so routine, you know, I'm just doing process, you know, I'm just doing steps, but why are you doing it? All right, if you know the why behind it, it becomes so much easier and you become a lot more successful. And I, I don't mean generally in life. I mean, you should know why things are happening. That will actually help you a lot in life. But I mean successful in terms of your exams at the moment, okay? But, you know, school is just a means to an end, okay? I, you want to do well on your tests and you want to do well on your exams, but really the fundamental idea is how to think, okay? And that's what we try to focus on, how we try to teach or show you proper methods of thought, okay? I'm not even sure if that sentence was right. Uh, proper methods of thought. Of thinking? Of thought. Yeah, who cares? That's why I do science, not English. Anyway, uh, guys, thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if this helped you out at all, we would so appreciate it if you gave us a hand. Like, subscribe, so easy, just hit the buttons. And also what would be a great help to us is if you recommend our channel to some of your classmates or friends you might be taking similar stuff. We also have a lot of other subjects out there. So take a look. Uh, we'd love to help you out with more stuff. All right. I'll see you soon. Be well.